and I think this is one of the powerful things about um, what we what we can do here is that we can actually use a system which was set up for the big practices and we can actually just say as a small practice we don't need to do it that way we can actually do our own thing and we can do our own thing to suit our own working area so it doesn't matter which country you're working in um, doesn't matter which part of which country you work in doesn't matter what kind of projects you're working on the whole properties thing is completely flexible and allows you to do what you need for your particular practice so on really what i'm going to talk about for the next hour is uh put the ideas for for actually embedding specification data into projects so this isn't actually classification this is taking it you know a step further and there's been a huge number of discussions about this um, there's a lot of complaint that archicad doesn't include anything standard uh, out the box for this and revit does um, i must admit i'm not familiar with the revit version but there's a lot of people have said that. Um, and to get the whole thing going, I don't know whether any of you actually have followed it. I started a discussion this week just to say, well, what's everybody else doing about specification? Because I'm just one person, you know, talking about this, but there are other things. And what I've come up with are these four possibilities here. Um, and, and what I'm going to do is run through each of them as best I can. Uh, but the one I'm going to spend most time on is the embedded embedded in the model, which is what I think uh, is, is, you know, the most efficient way to do it. And I'll show you in some detail how I do that so that you can choose whether or not you want to adopt the whole thing um, or whether you want to just say, yeah, I can do it another way and take it from there. So let's look at... A very old-fashioned one which was PDF notes that Eric and I talked about probably five years ago and the idea there is that you can actually put PDFs on a drawing and if I look at this I still use this occasionally this is a, uh, a project um, where I was creating something we have to do in the UK which is called a heritage statement so the idea is that I have to explain to the people who give me consent to carry out work to a very old building. This building is probably 400 years old. Um, I have to explain how I've arrived, you know, what the, what the building is about, what's important about it. So it's like a report, really. And as you can see, I've got a mixture of things on here. This is just an image. And I think Archicad is fantastic the way you can drop images in, manipulate them, uh, and that's linked. If I right click on that, uh, actually, you know, that one's it's unlinked, I think, but you can link them so that that way, if you edit them, it'll update. Um, and this here is actually a PDF. And so what you can do is you can drag a PDF that you've created and just drop it onto a layout. Um, as long as that PDF is then linked, and that one isn't linked at the moment, but let's link it back. So, so what I'm doing is I'm, I've right clicked, I've gone link, I'm going to browse and I'm going to find that file. It's because this is quite an old um, file that I haven't used in a while um, but it's a good example for you guys to look at um, sorry, going back to that. Um, and here a planning statement so if I pick that one um, it's going to change it because I've actually changed it since then. So I would uh, let's bring it forward. Get rid of that. Um, bring forward display order. Okay. So what I've got there is actually something that 
is actually a um, where's that thing gone? Which is to PDF that I've actually created in Word and you can see it's much bigger but that's actually a live link there's no need to go any further than that that's actually a live uh, a live link to a PDF and the PDF is in here under planning statement there's the PDF and that um, was created from this Word document and as you can see I've set the Word document up with the, the width of page that suits the layout on my drawing um, and I've then some, and then some of it I've got is just text. Some of it is has got a picture in. So what you can then do is you can be editing in Word. Uh, you you know so we could take the hold of that out and say we don't want that in anymore. That looks fine. We then say uh, we go and save as a PDF and publish that. You can see there, that's the updated version. If we then go to here, you see instantly that's changed. So in a sense, what you've got then is a live link between a very simple edited Word document here and your layout. Uh, but you're taking it through PDF Funny enough, Archicad used to read Word documents directly, but they dropped it. There was some argument with Microsoft about the way that it was all done, and they dropped that, and now it only reads PDFs. Now, of course, because it's PDF, you can actually create anything as a PDF, uh, and you could therefore, for instance, be using this. I occasionally do it where I actually put cost plans um, for a project. I just drop the cost plan onto a layout so that I've got one complete presentation for a client which has got drawings it's got images it's got photographs and it's got a cost plan all in the same pdf booklet that i've created using publisher so that really is i still think where there is some value for the idea of using pdf um, and so that's that's a good option um, you then got two things here that I'll mention. Uh, one is obviously CAD Image Keynotes. Now this has been around for a long time. I used to use this, and it's a very good system. And it essentially is it it's uh, you know it's twenty nine US dollars a month, um, and basically what you're doing is you're actually creating a database of notes. And so what happens is that those notes can then be attached to elements. Now, I'm not quite clear as to how complex this is now. When I used it, it was pretty simple. Um, it's really just like a kind of spreadsheet and you could put data into a spreadsheet and then you could edit that, uh, you could import that um, text back into Archicad. Um, but you know they do a free trial so if you're interested you know check it out it might give you uh, what you're after um the th at the other end of the scale there is the kind of big practice big stuff which is actually this thing about um the mbs specification um that stands for the National Building Specification. It's a UK project, um, comp very closely allied to the UK classification system, which is Uniclass. Um, I don't think there's quite the same thing in the US, although there are things in the US, but certainly what you're doing there is you're basically saying, 
you go to that and you're you're um you're actually uh getting a very sophisticated product that actually links completely into archicad it's very powerful uh it's quite expensive if you're a big practice really wanting to make sure your specifications are superb then you know this is a good option it does i think i uh, can't remember whether i saved a um uh, no i wanted to show you a, a sample can i get a download here specification tools free tools so i saved a link and I've, I've lost a couple of links mbs specification sample we've got sample specifications so let's look at uh, an architectural one uh, open that and there we go so what what they do here is that they do actually that's the wrong file um, hold on where's it gone there we go uh, sample app is what we should have here so this is the kind of thing that MBS gives you. Um, that long number there is the uniclass um, classification for a door set. And the reason I don't like it is because that number is completely meaningless to anybody. You know, how, how would you know that's a door set? You know, you've really got to know the classification system backwards. So you end up with this great long number that you have to put in somewhere in your system, which takes a lot of um, space up. And then when you actually create this, you've got an awful lot of um, headings, quite simple information. Um, and the complexity of filling all of this out is for a start quite onerous on the architect. You know, there's pages of it. This is this is just door sets, uh, and also, of course, when you're actually a contractor, if you're doing a house, you know, for a client, a private client, you know, uh, I mean, there's this thing here, fixing of wood frames. You know, do you really need to tell a good contractor how to fix a door frame? You shouldn't really need to do that, in my view. So I don't use it for that reason, but a lot of practices do and it's um it's got a very good name uh, there's Tim, a, yeah there's a comment from andy travers saying that there's a domestic smaller nbs so there there must be one that's more appropriate for the smaller residential project. there is that's true i still think it's too wordy and you'll see compared to mine which are really tightly packed you know information now it, it's not going to suit everybody because a lot of people say they want this the if you like the thoroughness of the mbs specification it's a personal choice um but i'm just trying to explain that it is a much bigger thing it does mean you've got to pay the other big downside for a lot of our users is it not available on the mac it's only available on PC, um, which is a real pain. And I know a lot of people in the UK complain about it. So in a sense, you know, you've got the PDF thing, which is simple, straightforward, um, but is not linked at all to the model or to the elements you, you're doing. Uh, you've got two paid examples here, CAD image, which is linked to the elements, and MBS specification, which is also linked to elements. And then you've got the way I do it, which is, if you like, it's kind of a bit of a DIY solution. Um, but I think it's pretty uh, a pretty thorough solution, and it creates sets of drawings and specifications that I often get complimented on by builders more than anything else, that actually they find it easy to use. So let's take a look at one of our files here. 
Um, so this is the main, um, um, our main hotel file. And what I've done is I've actually created a, a listing like this that starts to sort of show show us uh, you know what um, what data we can actually get so um, let's just look at what I've done here by looking at the scheme setting so up here in the criteria I've said I want all element types but for, for, to keep the simplicity down uh, at this stage of the conversation, I've sort of don't want any hot links. I've also put a couple of filters in here, which are to do with stairs and railings. Um, and they are really to do with the fact that the stair and railing tools are, uh, they, they actually contain an awful lot of data that I don't want. So basically I'm saying, I'm not interested in anything other than the headline data for a stair. So what I've done here is I've said the classification is not a direct child of a stair because all I want to know about is the stair. I don't want to know about the treads and the risers. And the same with the railing. I want to know about the railing, but I don't need to know about the components of the railing, which is what that means there, direct child of. So I'm excluding by saying it's not, is not, yeah? I'm then saying that the fields I want to look at are the element ID, the drawing note, which is a property I've added, and I'll come back to that, the 2D cross-section preview, 3D axonometry, GDL preview, and specification notes, which is another one I've added. And, and I'll talk through all of these different ones. So. Um, the f here we've actually then got all of our headings. We're going to look at the um, stuff down here, which is actually uh, curtain walling. Um, and so to explain what we've actually got, and I've deliberately kept this so it's a bit messy because I'll just show you then how we actually fix that. So at the moment we've got um, in here um, the type of ID that. Um, is created automatically in ARCHICAD. So CW is curtain wall, and you can see what it's done is it's actually created um, several different curtain walls, and it's it there was probably a 16 as well. It basically starts at oh you know oh oh one or whatever, and and adds in, and as as they're drawn, it adds adds one to it. So what I see the ID function being in, in my system is I want all curtain walls that are the same to have the same ID. So we would actually say um, that one and that one would be the same. So at the moment, I'm just going to copy that. And I'm going to put it there. The next thing um, and it's taking a while to uh, update that because this is this is a quite a big file with some hot links in there. The next thing is this the, this element called drawing note. Now, did I say I was going to do that next? Uh, yeah. So next, we're going to add sorry, hasn't finished yet. Next, what we're going to do is we're, we're going to look at um, this item here, drawing note and specification notes, which are ones I've added. And where you go to create that is up here under Options, Property Manager. Now, you'll see that there's a lot of stuff in here which came in with the our standard ARCAD template. Now, in my template, this is so. This is the standard ARCAD template. Sorry, this is the standard ARCAD template we've been working with, and there's an awful lot of data um, that, that is there, 
that you can use. But I didn't want to use any of that because that isn't set up the way I want to work. So when I actually create my office template, all of this goes, which is delete the locks. I'm not interested in that. What I've got up here is I've actually got a new heading here called specification for masters of ARCHICAD. And that has um, subheadings, one for drawing note and one for specification notes. And both of those are the data type is what's called general. Um, and there's no default value in there at all because I'm going to fill that all of that in later. And both of them apply to all elements. Now you can decide that you want to apply properties to only certain types of elements if you want, but I'm happy to just say everything I draw as an element, I want to be able to specify. So therefore it makes sense to me that I have those on all. But what I want to do now is to add some new headings because at the moment, if we go back to this, we've basically got uh, a great long list and it's quite hard to start to kind of navigate your way around that you know you're looking down here there's an awful lot going on they're all different types of uh, element because this is listing everything in the whole job you can see all sorts of things going on we don't need any of that so what I'm going to do is to say let's actually create something called a trade heading so I click on the main heading, specification MOA, and I click down here and say I want to create new. And so I'm going to call it trade. Uh, sorry, let's call it work uh, package. And you can see I'm going to add it as a subheading to the group to the main group specification. Um, And that one, if we sorry, if we go to that one, by the way, that one, um, that is a group heading, whereas this one is a subheading. So we created our subheading, and here, this is what I'm going to do to change. I'm not going to use general. I'm going to use something called an option set. And here, it then gives me, says, well, what options do you want to use? Well, let's actually say... Uh, we're going to have one called H11 Glazing Systems. But I think I'm going to have another one as well, uh, which I'm going to say is going to be, um, uh, I'm going to call it, this is a temporary one in a way, X, you know, um, to allocate. So you can then see that what's happened is what's appeared in here are these two. And what I'm going to do is to say I'm going to default it to allocate. So I'm going to say to myself, everything there is going to be automatically to allocate. And I can then decide what to add. So I say, that's fine. And it'll take a while to think about that and work out what it's going to do. And then we can edit the curtain walls to put those onto the glazing systems um, work heading. There we go. So I'm going to pick that one. I'm going to select that. So we're selecting everything that's got that heading there. And then uh, going to close. Where's that? Open, close team there. And you see on the right here, um, which is the way I've actually got my um, uh, sort of workspace setup, I can click on properties 
and uh, sorry, I've forgotten. Uh, I've forgotten something. I need to go back into options because it hasn't shown up. It wasn't showing there, and that's because <laughs> that is actually shown as being available for none, and I actually want it to be available for all. So when I now go back to here, it's a bit it, sorry, it's a bit slow this one, but I thought it was quite good to do it on the actual model. Um, Part of the reason it's slow is because a lot of hot links in here and they do slow it down. And we've got some ideas on hot links that we'll talk to you about later on in the course because there are we're developing ideas as to what we can do. So let's pick that one. There it is again. And we now go to properties and you can see here under specification MOA that has been allocated there. But when I click it, I can then change it to glazing systems. Go back to here. And I'm going to do the same with the other one. And can you change it directly within the schedule? Um, I know well, at the moment because I'm not listing that trade heading, but yes, I can do later. I just need, uh, let me just get back into it. Um, but actually, I don't particularly want to do it that way, Eric. So just bear with me. Um, okay, so that's a possibility in some workflows, but not in, in what you're showing right now. Yeah, um, and I'm trying to do it the simple way so that everybody gets it. So we're going to pick another lot here where we're just going to do exactly the same thing. And we're going to move that to glazing systems. Because what this does is it gives us, what I've created is a new heading. And I can now change the scheme settings so that I can actually just look at things in that heading. And that's a really powerful thing to be able to do. So you, if you imagine now you've gone through your project, and of course, if you've actually got um, your layers set up correctly and everything, then it would be pretty easy to isolate the different types of element. You can pick all of them and actually allocate them to a particular thing. But what that gives us here is an opportunity now to go back to our scheme settings and we can add a criteria. And we go down to the bottom here, pick properties, specification and let's pick work package add that so what we're going to do is we're going to say we only want to see glazing systems now one of the amazing things here is that we can now really simplify this because actually all of that is redundant because all we're doing is saying we only want to see things that have got a value here for glazing systems now let's see what we get now Two things, great. Now we're now we're really on in control. Okay. So the first thing we can then do is that we can then say um, let's copy that because we know it's the same thing. We then ref we then rebuild it, which on a PC is Control Shift R. I don't know what it is on a Mac. And we've only got one, and that's because we've got that up there. So we've merged the uniform item. Now, if we then add to the field here the work package, so we go to the same thing, specification work package, add. That's at the bottom, don't want it at the bottom. I'm going to put it right to the top. It's going to add an extra column. Don't want an extra column. We're going to show a headline. 
there. By the way, I just double clicked. If you double click on that, it actually will give you the correct height for everything in. Useful little trick. Um, so what it's now giving us here, look, is you can see that actually it's given us a subheading. And you can actually pull that right back to there. Actually, not quite. If we get, drop that back. But you start to get a nice layer that is understandable. You know, we can make that, um, say, you know, 2.5 and bold. And you've got a subheading. You've then got your ID. You've then got your drawing note. So let's think about it. Drawing, we've said this is this is actually H11. So actually, we're not going to call it CW014. What we're going to do is say that's H11-01. So we're starting to get a simpler, you know, setting out. That relates very clearly to that. And of course, if we have labeled that on the plan, that updates. So does the drawing note. So we could change that to something else. We could just say that's just a uh, curtain wall type A, change it. And it's changed everywhere. So, you know, every single drawing where you've put that drawing note on is there. So the drawing note is like a kind of quick shorthand thing to tell the builder what it is. So what you're doing is you're, you're actually telling the builder um, those two elements on something like a GA drawing, 1 to 50 GA drawing, you're saying it's that's your reference number in the spec, and that's what it is, just to give you an idea, Mr. Builder, of what you're looking for. And that then gives them a, a, a quick way of cross referencing specification. I've then put these three elements in here just to give you an idea of actually what other possibilities there are um, here the cross-section preview in this case isn't terribly interesting let's actually um, uh, make it a bit bigger doesn't really show a great deal if we really blew it up then you would actually see the cross-section um, I think if we make it bigger yeah and that's because I've got the setting here which the scale is actually to fit if I make that fixed it actually gets a bit big uh, and that's because it's not wide enough so if I do that and then uh, do that so in this particular case the the, the 2D cross section isn't that interesting, but if you've actually, if you're scheduling here uh, a, a um, complex wall profile, it'll show what you've drawn with your fills to create a complex profile in this window. So that can be quite good. Um, 3D AXO for curtain walling, that's quite useful. Just a very simple image. Um, this particular type of element has no GDL preview, so there's nothing showing in there. And of course, I've got specification notes here. So what are we going to do with specification notes? Well, we've got three things we can do with specification notes. One is we can just type straight in here. You know, we can just say it's going to be a, um, a, a Shuko uh, system 120. You know, so we can basically put our own text in there. Uh, and if you know exactly what you want and, you know, you've done it so many times, sometimes when I'm writing specifications for things, I think, yeah, I know this. I've done it over and over again. You can actually put it in there. It's not a terribly efficient way of workflow because, of course, you're creating something new every time. What's much better is to actually say, uh, let's get that information from somewhere else. So what I've done here is I've said we've actually got here 
a um, a Shuko specification. There we go. Specification texts. Uh, log in. There we go. Now I may not want to. I might want to put this in and edit it. But actually, let's drop the whole lot in like that. Um, so there, you've, you've got your specification notes, and it applies to every element with that reference number there. So you've already got a specification. Now, some things aren't elements. I mean, and you can basically do what I've just done there for anything in the model. It, uh, as long as it's a three-dimensional element, you can add a, a, you can actually attach properties to it. So if we look at this wall here, and we go to properties, you can see there are our main ones. We've got work package X to allocate. If we did actually move that to glazing systems, it will just refresh it. And there's our wall. We don't want to do that. That's not a, that's not a glass wall. <laughs> that was just an example, obviously. So we're going to put that back to, to allocate. Um, Say, for instance, you think, actually, you know, there's a sort of generic specification area that I want to get the contractor to talk about. So, for instance, there might be a generic specification that says to the contractor, I want you to send me the brochure on your proposed curtain walling system before you actually order it so that I can approve it. Um, you don't have to put that in as a three... 3D element. If we actually go back to our Shuko thing here, um, got a nice little image there. If we copy the image, I just right clicked and copied it. Stick it into ArchiCAD. Get it down to a sort of sensible thing. So you say, so well, you could put that on a drawing somewhere. You think, well, what use is that? Well, actually, as an image, there's no use whatsoever. But of course, what you can do with most things in the ArchiCAD is you can save it as an object. So let's just stick that in there. We just say uh, curtain wall. And to be consistent, we'll call it H. I might be good at this, but I still can't type. <laughs> so um, that's fine. We can delete that. We now go to object. Put it in. I think it's because the uh, the floor plan. Oh yeah, the floor plan look is 155 or something. But we, you can see, there's our object. Uh, I wouldn't normally do it like that. I'd miss the fact that the floor plan wasn't. A, it doesn't matter. We can just adjust it like that. No, actually, it needs to go another way around like that. I mean, we may say we may think it's a bit too big, but you know you can you can adjust that, and so um, and also when you actually make it in the proper floor plan, you actually get um, handles at the corners um, rather than that one. There we go. But of course, that's an object. So the first thing we're going to do is check it's got a classification. Doesn't matter what it is at the moment. So we're going to give it just construction element, and interestingly. ARCHICAD has no classification at all for um, anything to do with specification. 
so you can't really do much with it but you it has to have a specific a classification before you can add a property but then here you see we can actually say it's a glazing system and we can call that general spec notes And over here, uh, the element ID, we'll say H11 stroke 02. Go to there. And there it is. And it doesn't show anything here because, of course, it's just a 2D image. It may be an object, but it's just a 2D image. But you can then add, you could then say, you know, actually that's where you want that is there. And there you could then do C um, H11 stroke. Whoops. C H11 stroke. Oh, what? And for the sake of argument, we don't, let's get rid of those because they're not really relevant now to what we're talking about. We have said all we need to about those. Um, and there's another little trick here that you'll see over here, this thing called wrap text. If you undo wrap text and do it again, it should, oh, it hasn't done it there because that was too much. But it basically gives you the right length. So you can see we're starting to get here um, a specification. What was I going to do next? Um, so we talked about 2D spec item. We talked about copy. Right, import export using interoperability. Now we're going to get. Now we're going to start to do something a little bit more exciting. So, say for instance, you think. Well, all of this looks okay, but actually, I want the manufacturer to check that for me. What you can do is send this as a spreadsheet to the manufacturer, but you can send it in such a way that ARCHICAD knows what that field looks like. And if it's edited by somebody else, it will bring it back in and it will change it. So let's do that. If you go here, to file, interoperability, um, classification of properties, export property values from schedule. Just stick it on the desktop. Let's go here and have a look at the desktop. There it is. Open that. And it's an Excel spreadsheet. Here you'll see this is quite interesting, this, because of course you've got you've got the ID here, and you you know we've decided that the ID is whatever it is. But here, you've got this very, very long alphanumeric number. That's actually called the GUID. Now, we don't have access to that. But that's very important because one of the requirements of any BIM system is that every single element has its own GUID system. And you'll see that they're completely different. I don't know what the logic is or how this number is arrived at, but it's an internal thing within our but what we can now do is we can say here the specification notes we could say well let's actually change that um, ch uh, you know and uh, you know bs4566 I don't know whether that's it's just that's just a random number for a British standard I'm going to change both of those and here I'm going to say um, Let's just um, amend that and just take out a whole load of it, just just so that you can see what it looks like. So we've edited that, 
and of course this this is me doing this but it could be anybody doing this they can't access that bit there so you don't need to worry about that um, also if they change that it won't change coming back um, and if they change that it won't change but these uh, can be edited um, and so it would be wise to lock these cells before you send it to somebody else so that they can only do this but you then save close that and we then uh i'm not sure i can do it in there but let's go back to here just so we can make sure we can do it we go back to interoperability classification of properties and this time we import property values into elements there's our import open that it tells you what it's going to do and you see it's grayed out the id it's not allowing them to um edit that import tells you it's been done successfully we then go back to here and there is our updated specification information so firstly you could do this by sending it off to somebody for instance you know a manufacturer but also you could actually be saying well this specification notes here could actually be edited by somebody else in the office who's much better at specifications than you are you know you might be great at designing buildings but you're rubbish at doing specs so you could you could put in here you know help I don't know what this should be and somebody else can then work away in a spreadsheet and once they finish, they save it, they tell you, send it back, and you just re-import the whole thing, and it updates everywhere. And, of course, that is attached to all of these elements. So that works very, very well. Um, you can also copy-paste in from another project. So, for instance, you may have actually done another job where you've got curtain walling and you don't want to copy the curtain wall element in from another job but you just open that job copy the data from it and just drop it in it's simple copy paste thing um so you can you can you know do it like that um now the other things you can do with this is uh, tim uh, yeah can you explain how you would copy and paste data? Are you talking about just going and opening up the, a schedule in another project and copying text and pasting it in, or are you talking about something else? I, at this stage, I'm just talking about copying data by copying text. Okay. Um, we Don't forget, we did a whole thing on favorites some time ago, and I didn't want to particularly rehash that, but of course, if you've got a favorite curtain wall which has got all of this so for instance we could say uh you know we're quite happy with that we could say well let's actually put that there so it's attached to the element that's that curtain wall element and we take that curtain wall element and we copy it we can actually put that in another in a favorites file save it and then bring it back in and when you copy paste in from a favorites file it'll bring all the properties all that data brings with it so that's that's the whole basis of the favorites file idea that we've talked about before um, I wanted to just say that of course when you've set up something you like you know we've got this um, uh, property manager idea so we've actually got here our specification thing that we like the look of you can export it here just hit export and uh, you know say so that's going to be you know MOA spec save it <coughs> exported basically you can then import that into any other file 
and that's useful in terms of setting up your office template if you decide that you want to change or if you want to change things from one job to another. But the main thing is that, you know, you want to get your office template right um, first to do it. Um, hyperlinks are another useful thing. So what we can do here is that we can say, let's put another, another thing in here. We're going to add a thinking call link. Uh, we're just going to call it um, a, a general data type. We're going to apply it to all. Click OK. We're then going to add that there like that. So what can we do with that? We can basically say, where's our uh, Shuka? Here it is. Copy that. Drop it into there. You've got a link. Now, um, if we then go back now to this element. Um, how can we use this stuff? Well, we can go into our label um, and let's actually pick that. Now we've got something strange in there, but that's okay. Uh, actually, we can just go straight in and do it like this. So get rid of that and get rid of that. Okay, that. So we start from scratch. So what we're going to do is we're going to say what's the auto text information that we actually want here. Um, under general, we say, well, actually, we're going to want the element ID. So we add that in. That gives us H11. We're then going to go down to specification, the properties here, and we're going to say, well, we actually want drawing note, specification notes, work package, and link. Um, we've got a whole load of stuff gets there. We need to make sure we've got the wrap text on because at the moment it's going off all over the place. Um, that's uh, just, oh, come on. I think it's because I haven't got any returns. Yet. Anyway, you, you, we can basically set that up. Curtain wall type A. Um, something like that. So as you can see, we've got live data links for everything we put in. However, that link is rubbish. Nobody's going to find. You know, how can you follow that in a drawing? And also, um, sorry, actually, there I've got the trade heading is needs to put. So the links really um, uh, don't work that well from that point of view. Uh, but what you really need to use there is is a link shortener like a bitly or one of those there's quite a few of them around they're, they're, they're sort of free and what I've tended to do is to set them up as part of my um, Dropbox link so what I'll show you the way that bitly for me works uh, I think you're gonna if I can log in yeah so I've got a whole load of stuff here, as you can see, mainly um, this. I mean, let's look at that one. So that's a nice, nice short one, as you can see. Um, and that takes, ah, oh, that takes us direct to a manufacturer's website. Uh, I wanted to show you another one that, um, I think that will go. <laughs> These are all direct links. Um, I was 
try that one. No, that's not linked. Um, I tell you what, I'll go straight into my Dropbox and I'll show you Dropbox the way that that works is that I have got here and there and there it's this one here there I've got a folder in my Dropbox which has all sorts of useful things in it so let's look at lintels so basically it's got here um, something like a precast concrete lintel so that's you know standard manufacturer's data as a pdf and of course you could put that in your drawing or you can say um, you want to share that and it says copy link it's copied to the clipboard I know that this is completely the wrong link for this thing, but if we actually look at properties and go to link, we can delete that one. You see, you can do it either way. There, I'll put that in. That's changed there, and also, of course, it's changed here. There. Um, but if you if you basically create a link like that, then run it through Bitly, what you can do is to link to something which is in with you within your control. You're not relying on a manufacturer who could at any moment decide they're going to change the structure of their website or delete something or whatever. You can actually take everybody to something that's in your control on Dropbox and the bitly link will reduce that down and there's two reasons why you should do that firstly is because that's very long and quite you know people are going to be phased by it but the second thing is that if you extend if you take a link like this which archicad had broken into multi-line and put that into a pdf it won't work because the pdf system will only read the first line it doesn't read the rest of it. Archicad will read the whole lot. If you actually put that into a BIMX file, it will read the whole thing and it will let the link straight through. But um, we'll come back to that. Um, I've got uh, a bit more to get through, but we're doing fine. Um, so what does actually one of these specifications look like? Well, this actually is one I talked to Eric about um, some time ago, uh, which is actually a project of mine that I've just tendered. And what, what it looks like is a normal specification. So there you go, normal specification, headings, different elements. Interesting there, you see, we've got something there I need to fix. And I know why that is, because it's a hot link issue, and I, I'm still struggling to, well, I think I've sussed hot links now, but I, in this job it wasn't. But you can see we've got everything, you know, all there that the contractor can then price. And of course this, I just send the contractor, the, A, I send it to them as, as a spreadsheet, B, it actually goes on to a, a document like this. And C, of course, the whole lot carries through into BIMX. So what you're doing by creating something and using this, I mean, that's, you know, looks just like a normal page from a, and in fact, um, there was actually a cost column here. I just added a properties thing for a cost and not put anything in it, just so they've got boxes to put the prices in. Um, so you could do that. You can also do some very clever things with these, uh, this one here. This list of 
the provisional sums in the project. How did I do that? Let's look at the scheme settings. There you go. I've said the criteria is specification, which is the field, contains the word provisional. It's all, and it will just list everything that's got provisional in it. Um, it'll actually list the revisions. I don't think there are many at the moment. Um, no, I haven't got any revisions. Of, uh, sorry, it's just still still running. Oh, there we go. So basically, I've got um, a revision heading so that when I actually make a revision, I can actually tag it and I can then give the contractor a list of the revisions that were made to the specification, not just to the drawings. Um, and I need to move on because we should finish soon. Uh, so, so, yeah, I've got uh, in our one here. So this is one of our hot links. And uh, you see here it's bathroom plan in 3D. That's what it looks like. Um, there's a missing material. Ignore that for the moment. But you can see that all we've got is the fittings, the casings. You know, all of that is fine. But because all of these things are um, labeled, most of them are anyway, we can use auto text to pick up in a 3D document, notes like that. But we can also start to use auto text to say, oh, let's do something, let's, let's actually give the builder a bit more information. Uh, let's actually put in here, let's find um, wall. Uh, so we've just told the builder how, big, how much wall area that is or using auto text. And at the same time, he knows it's wall tiling, it's M40-10. So he can look up and I've told him under that um, how much, well, I will have told him how much money to put into it. Um, then uh, what we then do is to say, this is the basic element data. And you can see here the preview pictures are quite useful when you're using objects drawing notes there. I haven't put any description in yet. Um, but you can also, uh, that one is then saying it's got a value. It, the classification has a value. Here, this is actually a reverse schedule. And this is, says, well, it's got no value, i.e. missing. And so we can actually go into that and we can say, okay, we know that one's missing. We'll give it a classification value. We know it's an MEP element, uh, call it that. We can then say, um, get to the bottom on this one, specification. You know, so we just say it's a double basin. And now, when we go back to that schedule, there's nothing in it because it now does have a classification and it's added here to that one. So you can do reverse scheduling as well. Uh, you can also do door types. That's just a simple door schedule. Very easy to do that. Some people struggle with these and I don't know quite why, but um, Essentially, you're saying you're quoting the reference, which actually is the ID. Um, this, uh, you can see, for them is the view from the opening side. You've got the quantity, you've got the drawing note, and the specification note. So very simple. And you could add all sorts of stuff in here if you wanted to. And of course, you can use, you can use the standard things that are inside ARCHICAD. So for instance, if you wanted to pick up um, something quite complicated. You go down here and pick up the library part parameters and you get a whole list here. Don't be put off by this kind of stuff. Just look at it. It's not that 
tricky when you find it. Here we go, Arcad Library, Objects, Basic, Doors, Hinge Doors. Let's pick one, doesn't matter which one you pick. All of these settings are the same for every door, so it doesn't matter which one you pick. But you can see everything that you put in is then available to you to schedule. So, you know, we could pick um, fire signage, add. And there isn't any, but if you put it in there, oh, there we go. So everything is available to schedule. And when it comes to the wall tiling, you can also schedule that in a similar way in that you've, you've still got the same thing, the element ID, drawing note, specification note, and you've got the here, net surface area on the inside, which basically gives you those areas. And of course, you can also total that by clicking that one, and it gives you the total added together. So, this, the, there is a tremendous amount that you can do with this. There's one bit that is quite hard to get your head around, and that is hot linking. Um, and the problem with hot links is that I've been editing this here. This is a hot link which is nested inside another hot link which is then in turn hot linked into the main file. And if we went back to the main file now and updated the hot links, this wouldn't carry through. You have to actually go through and update each hot link. And, and of course, what that then means is if you're going through, ed, if you want to edit your, uh, sorry, that's the curtain walling one, I pointed the wrong one, this, this one here, uh, if you want to edit your bathroom fittings, which are in this hot link file, you have to open the hot link file. You can't edit the data from within the main file. So although here, that main, that bathroom layer actually exists, uh, it's on one of the upper floors. Um, story three, I think. Yeah. So although that bar, that hot link there is showing correctly in terms of the geometry, some problem with the layer problem to do with the, the tub not showing, but although that's showing correctly there, the data won't show through until you actually uplink, update both hot links involved. We're going to show you later on ideas we've had about how you actually keep the hot links all in the same file, which avoids that problem. Um, and, uh, and sorry, by later on, Herbie tonight, but another time. Um, and I think that that probably has sent everybody to sleep, Eric. So <laughs> um, I think um, that's certainly a lot to absorb. <laughs> yeah, a lot to absorb. Um, I haven't seen any significant questions here. There's uh, just a quick question from John Dunham about does it cost to use Bitly? And I responded, uh, no, it's a free service. Um, to create an account on Bitly, is is that something that um, you, it's you just... It's free as well. Yeah. It's free. And there's quite a few of them, aren't there? There's, there's new ones arriving all the time. You know, I think they're all trying to work out how they're going to um, make any money, but at the moment they're just trying to gather users. So, um, you know, ride the wave while you can. I think one of the things about Bitly is that you can just go to the site without logging in. You can create a link, you know, basically saying, hey, here's this long link to the Dropbox or to the manufacturer's site. Give me, a, you know, something to work with, and it will create it, and it'll work right away. You don't even have to have an account. But if you want to be able to check in and see how many times it's been accessed, which would be mainly used for marketing purposes to say, how many clicks did I get? How many people actually went to that page? 
you know, then you want an account so you can go um, check the stats. But actually, just simply for creating a link and just saying, you know, I want to put a short link in, it does it. You know, obviously, it's all just sort of computer bits. You know, no no individual is, is, um, needs to take any time. The other advantage, Eric, and what I, why I've got an account is that you can see here, I've actually got a whole list of stuff that I've just created. So I'm start I'm starting to get a kind of library going of things which link to my Dropbox account. So I can then cop I can then think, okay, I have here I've got one, you know, a trim this square fire rated fixed down lighter. I just copy that and I can copy that into my file. And I know it links yeah, no, that's, that's great. So, that, so by the way, the, the, the links have bit.ly, whereas yeah. you're on the portal where you're managing the stuff, and you can see it's bitly.com, and in this case, app.bitly.com. So it can be a little confusing, but the short links just are bit.ly and then a slash and some small number of characters, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So uh, let's see um, if uh, there are any other questions. Um, we have about uh, 15 people who are still um, on the call at this point. So let's see if there's anything else. Um, maybe you can give up, uh, bring up the smart sheet, and we can talk about what's coming up next time. Um, uh -huh. I'll show you one more thing here, which is the schedule. But I, these, these are the kind of things that the the contractors just are amazed at when I show them these. Um, this is my light fittings schedule. So basically, I can give the electrician this. So here are all the preview pictures. Um, some of the ones I've invented, you know, here this is LED tape, so I'll put a little picture of that as a, in a preview picture against an object I've created. And, you know, again, you're telling them, fine, you know, I, I need 54 wall lights. And, right. and, of course, in here you can add the link and everything else. You can even put fire exit signs. You know, there's all sorts of stuff you can do. Uh, with this and things like you know general fire detection system the reason that hasn't got one of those links is because it doesn't actually it's a 2d thing mm -hmm. so yeah you know, lots lots to do like that so let's look at uh, next time right okay so while you're bringing that up um, so some comments so uh, Eric Zerong says good summary I've gone all in with properties so he's obviously Going right. for it. Uh, Ignacio says, have to review all over again when the video is available. There's a lot of information. Um, yeah. And then Ken Brooks says, it's over my head and I don't have any questions right now. So uh, I know, Ken, um, you know, if you want some specific help on setting certain things up, let me know. Uh, I can go over specific parts of this in the ARCAD coaching program. Uh, so, you know, we can set up a schedule together and things. Um, you know, I think, Tim, you showed a range of different ways to use data and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to, some of it sort of was slow to, like, get everything set up. Uh, but ultimately, I think if you just keep in mind that you're able to produce schedules like you just showed, you know, that lighting fixture schedule uh, was, you know, so visually appealing, so full of useful information and say, this is where you want to get to. You want to be able to have information about your project automatically kept up to date and consistent that you can share with others and manage inside your office. Um, and that really what you're doing is creating a structure for hanging the data, hanging the, the information, um, and helping Archicad to just report the stuff that is going to be useful for running the project. So that's what it's about. I think, Eric, one, one of the things that I spotted years ago about ARCHICAD is that I stopped thinking about it as a drawing program. I think about ARCHICAD as being a huge database that just happens to have a pretty front end <laughs> for architects. 
And actually, if you look at the way Archicad is written behind the scenes, I think you'd find that essentially it is a database. Mm -hmm. And what we're starting to see coming through is the opportunity to access that database in a way that even architects can understand. You know, we don't have to be computer programs to do this. This is really easy stuff I'm doing. It's not at all rocket science. Um, it takes a certain degree of application and a certain degree of forward planning uh, and, um, and a lot of consistency, you know, in terms of actually the way you organize yourself. <laughs> but that, you know, systems and uh, uh, what makes you money, you know, that is the difference. If you've got a really good system, then you can actually create this kind of stuff completely automatically, much, much faster than your competitors are doing. Much faster than somebody can in Revit, way faster than somebody can do in SketchUp or anything like that. You know, Archicad has got a tremendous power built into it. It's there for everybody to tap into. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I think uh, that's all the questions. You wanted to say what's coming up next. Uh, by the way, Ian says uh, he, he might toss his CAD image subscription for the, for the keynotes because he <laughs> is seeing obviously how you can do it directly within ARCHICAD. Um, I'll just give a little fair counterpoint to it. Uh, Keynotes allows a really f nicely formatted table of specifications um, beyond just sort of a tabular one that um, that uh, Tim had. You know, you can have headings and and sub items and indentations. I mean, it, it does allow some more formatting. And <clears throat> the one thing that I think uh, really is interesting is that it can automatically pull data from the drawings on a sheet. So you can have a list of spec specifications that relate to just whatever drawings are on that sheet, um, which in theory, you could set up certain um, reporting tables that would say only uh, we only want to report certain drawing types or certain zones or certain things, you know, like you're doing, Tim. But the fact that it automatically just if you put a drawing on the sheet, if it has certain elements, those elements just get seen. That's it's a pretty interesting, um, powerful feature. That is good because what, what I'm doing with that is that I'm actually creating my own work um, uh, work packages. This is a typical one for drainage. So basically I've got here um, a sheet which has got a drawing on it, which is the drainage drawing. And it's then got a the drainage specification because I've actually created a schedule that only pulls the drainage information out. And it then mm -hmm. lists Thing on there, uh, and also it lists the drain runs, um, which means that you can get totals. So that's very useful. For more info on the Masters of Archicad program, please visit mastersofarchicad.com. This has been Eric Bobro. Thanks for watching.